I love that. Tell us who you are and all about your organization, please. Yeah, um, my name is Alexis Arnold, and I took over Artless Bastard Gallery in downtown De Pere, Wisconsin, two years ago. Um, as of May, but officially in August, we are a nonprofit organization. So now it's Artless Bastard Inc. And yeah, we're really dedicated to three things, um, you know, connecting to the public, to the community, um, educating artists, and also, um, you know, the public on the arts. And then um, continuing to offer um, exhibition for emerging artists of all levels. So yeah, those are our three kind of uh, main missions right there. How do your exhibits work? Um, let's see, as far as, well, we do group call for art. So um, for our group calls, those are open nationwide. So anyone in the United States can enter. Um, we've actually had a couple that have submitted from Canada, which has been interesting. So um, it's just, you know, you go online and... <laughs> I have one here too. <laughs> My dog. <laughs> She's like, hey, mom. Uh, you go online, and um, right now we have a new call for art form. And so I believe you can enter up to five pieces at a time. And then typically we have a theme around our group shows. So the current call that is open um, is for photography. So with this one, it doesn't necessarily have a theme. Um, for the subject matter, what we're really looking to showcase is how diverse and unique photography is. A lot of people don't consider photography an art. So it's open to film, it's open to digital, um, alternative processing, mixed media. So I'm interested to kind of see what gets submitted for that. Solo shows um, fill up pretty fast. Um, right now we are filled for the year. Um, also because we're representing a handful of artists, which this is the second time that we're doing that for this year. And in conjunction with representing a body of work, they get a solo show. Very cool. How does that work for you guys? Do you um, like do a call for artists for the artists you're gonna represent? Yes, so um, we do the call a couple months out. Um, I think I did it in November and um, they have to submit their artist bio. They have to submit um, a statement about the pieces or the body of work and then give an example of what that body of work is. If some of them are in the process of creating new work for this, so um, you know they can kind of show past their past styles and past, you know, past pieces so I can get an idea. Um, and then um, each of them gets a, a dedicated gallery page on our website, which includes their statement, artist statement, and then also um, it's like an online shopping cart for them as well so people can purchase their artwork. So yeah. you yeah. guys do classes too, right? What kind of classes do you do? Yeah, we just expanded um, September, I think it was. It's all like a blur, timeline's a blur. Um, what we call the Artless Annex, and that space is really dedicated towards teaching. Um, um, and it's just a space for artists to use uh, as they will. So it's going to be exciting to see how it kind of grows as this will be our first year having it. We, um, it's a space like if, if an artist wants to teach and they have something they want to teach to the public, whether it's kids or adults, they can do that on that platform. Um, but also it's really important for me, what I'm learning um, just from running the gallery is um, artists really need to get dialed in on the back end of how to run their business in order to succeed. Um, you know, and that starts with having your artist bio. Um, that starts with, you know, you're, you have to have an artist statement, right? Um, you should have a body of work that you can show. Um, how to photograph your artwork, how to pricing. That's a huge hot topic, right? How do I price my artwork? And you need to be consistent about it. Um, so those are, you know, kind of all marketing, all that kind of stuff, back end stuff that we're gonna start doing on a repeat. Um, probably, you know, like every couple of months, um, repeating those classes. Because what I'm seeing is, um, there's a lot of confusion around those things. And maybe some people are stronger in one area, but they're lacking in the other. And, um, you know, part of being an artist is you're self-employed. You are your own business. So it's really important, um, that you have those things dialed in. So when an opportunity presents itself, 
you are ready to go instead of scrambling to create, you know, your resume, your bio, your statement. Um, it's just, it's, it's better to be prepared. Oh, and being organized on the back end, really important. Um, I made a note too, you guys did like a fundraiser or an event this year. Was that the first time you did that? Yes, well, we had our first fundraiser, which we planned in less than two months. <laughs> um, and we will do another one again, um, probably a little bit earlier in October this year. So yeah, it was fun. We had an art auction. Um, very grateful to all the local businesses in downtown to peer that donated for our raffle baskets. So that was a huge hit. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, a lot of work, but yeah, it was, it was great. Very cool. Well, I have a couple questions for all of you, but I think we'll move on to the next one and then we can come back to questions and open up to questions for our guests here too. Michael, do you want to go next? Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Carrie. So I'm Michael O'Malley. Uh, I'm the owner of the Premier. The Premier is an open concept art incubator. Essentially, we allow anything that an art entrepreneur would like to see happen in Green Bay come to life. Um, so we have a very wide range of things that happen, including art galleries. Um, with that being said, our art galleries are very different compared to a lot of other art galleries, um, mainly because we don't have somebody that is uh, spearheading the entire endeavor. So, um, like Alexis Arnold is, you know, doing fantastic work at Arliss Bastard and planning out an entire year of content for people to constantly be going to. We uh, wait. And when somebody brings a project to us, we work with them in order to figure out how we can kind of make it come to life. Um, also, like Alexis was saying, with figuring out price ranges and uh, building a clientele and infrastructure, we also uh, really cut our prices for people that are still trying to massage their product into the market and figure it out. So we don't necessarily teach classes on how uh, they should market, more or less we, uh, you know, have them exposed to the public and see uh, if they can sell it for that price that they really want to get. And then we go from there. That's awesome. So more of kind of a, a pop-up concept or something kind of more yes. shorter term. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Very short term. Um, and yeah, very pop-up. And this also plays into kind of the wide variety that will be there um, on occasions. Can you tell us a little bit more about what the Premier has to offer artists aside from galleries? I know that's the topic tonight, but I know with your studio spaces and a whole bunch of other stuff, there's other ways that artists can interact with you. Sure, yeah. So um, essentially the gallery space uh, that I'm speaking of is also our dance suite and our event suite. It's 5,000 square feet of, you know, open concept space that any artist can use for dance classes or you know if they just want a rehearse routine we just had uh, the miss green bay contestants in there rehearsing a routine and they usually work with barb's dance and so barb's dance was just you know uh doing great business and they had a class going on so they needed a space to go to uh kind of on the spot and so that's what we're there for we also have a photo suite with some nice natural light and we have spaces for monthly renters as well and just a wide variety <clears throat> of people that are are either trying to become professional are already professional or are hobbyists in the art field and it's just a great environment it's really fun I'm muted. I'm sorry. How long have you guys been around? How long has the premiere been there? Uh, we have been there for two years, almost three now. Um, and it's just been a wild ride. Uh, we originally came up with our concept almost eight years ago and pushed it for about five years. Um, and now we're located at the Rail Yard Innovation District, uh, thanks to base companies and the city of Green Bay. Very cool. That's on North Broadway, right? Yes. Yep. 520 North Broadway. That's awesome. How many artists do you have kind of interacting in that space right now? Well, we have room for 36 tenants. 
Uh, currently, we have right around 24 tenant spaces sold, uh, but that does not include the amount of artists that utilize the space. So for example, if we have one band, that band might be a member of you know, five different people. So we only have one tenant for that band, but the band is actually, you know, five strong. So it's very uh, fluctuating. And of course, bands, you know, they kind of uh, come and go as they please. And so different guitarists or different drummers. Um, and then too, with our artists, uh, it's the same thing. It's, it's a lot of collaboration, <clears throat> excuse me. So we might have one photographer on the lease, but they might be working with two or three others that are constantly in our space. So uh, quite a few people. Awesome. Do you guys allow like 24 seven access to the facility? Yes, we do. Uh, for hourly bookings, we only allow between 9 a.m. and 10 p.m. Uh, just because it's, it's my wife and I who are constantly running back and forth. Uh, and, you know, we like to spend time at home every now and then. Um, but for our monthly tenants, they're allowed to be there constantly. So um, we might have somebody showing up at 2 a.m. to, uh, you know, paint or somebody showing up at 6 a.m. to take photos. It's up to them. Very cool. And is there any art form that you guys don't allow in the facility? Um, you know, we have, uh, we had a haunted museum in our space. Um, Tim Fries was trying to and has successfully springboarded in the greater community. So now he's in downtown Green Bay off of Oneida. Um, but every now and then we will get people that are concerned um, that it's not art, uh, you know, that curating a haunted museum is an art. And I personally believe, uh, I was actually just talking to Michelle Diedrich, who was on here about this in uh, the dark arts. So, uh, you know, it's just kind of trying to massage the product of the premiere to not be subverting from art. However, art is self-expression. So in order to t tell somebody that they can't express themselves, uh, it seems to me to be a crime. Um, but, you know, we also have been really keeping our eye on um, public speaking, which is an art form, but making sure that the rhetoric is not something that's damaging um, the space itself and those around them. Well, I uh, have a museum studies background, so I absolutely agree about museums. Oh, cool. Um, Haley, why don't you go next? Tell us a little bit about the Art Garage. Okay, um, I'm Haley. I'm the Gallery and Program Specialist at the Art Garage here in Green Bay. Um, we are a nonprofit arts organization. We have been here since 2006. Our gallery entrance is at 1400 Cedar Street, just across the street from the Artisan and Business Center. Um, some of the main things we do, we have, we host exhibitions in two gallery spaces. Um, we offer workshops for all experience levels and ages. We have studio space for artists, um, and we also do some other pop-up events such as um, vendor fairs. How does your um, gallery spaces work? How do artists interact with those? So we have a front gallery and a side gallery. Our front gallery um, is a space for one month long solo or group exhibitions. It's a rentable space. Those exhibitions are curated by the renting artists or artists. And then our side gallery hosts a two month long call for art group exhibitions. And those are usually themed uh, theme shows that are open to submissions from the community. All experience levels are welcome. And the themes are usually based on a subject matter. Cool. And I know that um, we're kind of talking about fine art or whatever right now, but um, I know you guys do more, your mission serves more art forms, kind of like Michael's does. Can you tell us a little bit about those? So our mission is to support the um, visual, performing, and literary arts. So in the past, we've also had things like open mics or pop-up concerts, uh, things like that. We're really open to any way that we can uh, incorporate that. Um, I know in the past we have hosted events with Literacy Green Bay to involve the literary arts. Um, so yeah. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to tell us about the art garage? 
Um, I don't think so. I could talk a little bit more about like our workshops in the studio space if you want to do that now, or is that something to wait till the end? No, go for it. That would be great. Okay. So we have, um, so our exhibition, our gallery is kind of our main, the main thing that we do. Our workshops are our other big program. Um, we offer one day workshops meant for beginners or it's just as something fun to do. We also offer a lot of multi-session workshops for beginners and experienced artists to learn new skills or um, expand on skills they already have. Um, our studio space, is in our gallery. It's right in the middle of our gallery space. Um, they're semi-private studios that range in uh, size up to 140 square feet. That's also open to all experience levels like our gallery. Um, and those are main, the main thing. Our vendor fairs, we usually have one or two of those a year um, featuring local artists selling handmade goods that you can take home the same day. So those are, those are the main things we're doing here. What about the program you guys do with kids in the summer? Oh, <laughs> I suppose that ties in with our workshops. Um, we have our youth summer our workshops that happen um, usually June through August. Um, those are workshops for kids ages 6 to 16. This year we're trying to do um, seven weeks and we're going to try and incorporate some. We usually do Monday through Friday, five day long workshops. And this year we're going to try and do two and three day workshops as well to make it a little bit more accessible for all income levels and incorporate some other things that wouldn't necessarily take a full five day uh, curriculum. So that'll be exciting to see how that all turns out this summer. And then that's also usually ended by in September, um, the our front gallery then is dedicated to work made by the kids that took you some of our workshops. So. I'm going to kind of summarize. So if artists who are watching this later, right, and they want to know how they can be involved with the Art Garage, you guys um, display artwork, but you also hire instructors, right? So you hire instructors for your youth classes and for your yep. regular workshops? Yep. All of our all of our workshops, we hire um, artists to instruct. Awesome. I'm trying to think about everybody who's going to be watching this, if they're artists and they're trying to figure out how they can interact with each of your organizations. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I noticed that Emma didn't join us from the Lawton Gallery, so I apologize she's not here with us tonight, but that means um, Terry and David are here from New Art Space in De Pere. Um, so we heard from Alexis, Michael, and Haley. If you guys want to tell us a little bit about your organization, we would love to hear from you. I do have some general questions for the four of you after we hear your introduction. So we have a little um, kind of overview presentation ready to go. Um, I don't know if that's appropriate uh, or if you would just prefer to do a Q&A like you've been doing. What if do you, you think? Can you have pictures and stuff to show us? I'd love to see them, absolutely. Okay, so um, I'm not familiar with the WebEx um, interface, so I don't know how I go to a screen share with you. I am assigning presenter privileges to you right now. You are. Yes. And now you should have a button near the bottom of your screen that says share with like a little vertical arrow. Sure. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Very little vertical error. Yes. So. <laughs> and they seem to update it every month and move it around. So <laughs> I'm glad we can find it tonight. It's requiring me to uh, make some changes to my system preferences here. So just give me a moment. It's okay. Yeah. We've got plenty of time and oh, I no. that before we post a recording, Alicia can edit any of this out for us. So. Okay, well, let's, uh, I'm not sure if that worked because it wanted me to quit the whole interface, but let's just, oh, um, what do you think here? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're in that little loop. You guys said you're up in Door County today? We are. We're um, up in Door County for two weeks. We're coming to you from um, Idea Gallery in West Jacksonport, where um, every year I do a little retreat with a group of artists to just get back into our art selves <laughs> and away from the things in our lives that take us away from art making. So oh, that sounds wonderful right now. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm sitting here surrounded by all my art supplies too, so that makes it even more difficult, I think. Well, I want to take over here. I don't. I don't see that it's working. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to be happening. If it's a PowerPoint file, you can email it to me too, and I can try to do it from my end if you want to. If not, feel free to just tell us. Well, being photographers, we like <laughs> we, we like to we talk, have our visuals. <laughs> yeah, we talk through our visuals. <laughs> so you're, both, um, you're both photographers. Yes. yes, we are. Well, yes, we are. Now that you begin to answer. Um, okay. Well, um, how about we'll email you the PowerPoint afterwards, and you can attach it to whatever materials you hang on to. Perfect. Okay. So. Yes, we are both photographers and uh, very different photographers, but we seem to get along just fine anyway, and um, known each other off and on for years and years and uh, then the pandemic it was the best thing that happened is that we wound up spending time together we do need to give you the 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 subtext is that david up until uh, a few months ago lived his entire life in philadelphia and i spent my professional life in oregon having grown up in Green Bay, relocated here after I retired. So he's a recent transplant and I'm a replant. Uh, <laughs> um, and so uh, in, in doing that, in that coming uh, together in De Pere, um, we needed, uh, first of all, to deal with our creative practice needs in terms of having adequate space. Um, I had built out a small working space in my home, plus I rented a space in the De Pere downtown area to build out into a dark room and then had two storage units full of giant crates of, of my traveling exhibitions and that sort of thing. David moved two uh, big U-Haul trucks here and, um, and in those U-Haul trucks was uh, uh, one piece of furniture, a chair, a and chair. a coffee table. Yeah, the chair is really nice. A coat tree. Yeah. And thousands of boxes of prints, uh, books, and framed works. So um, our, our coming into this realm is all about us trying to find a great place to build out our working studio. And in doing that, we ended up uh, on a little slow uh, unfolding stream of more space than we were thinking about until finally we just kind of gave in and said, you know, we're, we're in love with this location. Everything is right, even though it's twice as much as we need. We can do good things with this extra space. And so that's how New Art Space um, came to be. It's, uh, for those of you who aren't aware of it, it's at uh, 124 North Broadway. In De Pere. De Pere. So. So it was really fun to convert an old clothing store, which was really a, a blank slate, um, uh, into what we think is really premium studio space for us and really nice, store, really nice storefront um, event and gallery and um, other kinds of uh, use space. That's right. Yeah. And uh, just had a big event last week, right? Yeah, like yeah. like like our big opening. <laughs> yeah, so you know, I mean, uh, developing this space was not part of a grand business plan, and we didn't have a lot of long range thinking that went into it. We knew what we wanted in our space, and spent some time trying to figure out what kind of program, what kind of engagement, what kind of investment we wanted to make um, uh, in the exhibition space. So, um, in the midst of just acquiring uh, the space at the end of the summer, uh, I had already pre-committed to spend three months uh, back in Oregon teaching one very last semester at the University of Oregon. And so, from a distance, we did all of the pre-planning, um, which is putting together the, um, the curation for the first two shows, orchestrating a light installation when we got done, getting a sink installed, I mean, all kinds of things uh, happened at, with the, the magical fingers um, of long distance work via a computer. Yes, so we got back and um, definitely De Pere really did a, a lovely thing to give us this ribbon cutting ceremony with um, James uh, 
Boyd. Boyd, the mayor. And we had the opening reception for New Year, New Year, New Art One, uh, which included Alexis, uh, David, and uh, 10 other artists um, that we cherry picked from around the region. And we will follow that up with um, uh, New Year, Do Art 2, which will open uh, in March and run for an equal amount of time, about six weeks, and feature another 10 artists. So, yes. How are you choosing those artists? Are you picking them because you know their work and you know them, or are you doing calls, that kind of thing? Well, this the first, the first exhibition, we did this by invitation, and we really see our our position within the region as gearing towards serving the mid-career mature artist. Um, and so there are a lot of people that we know who do remarkable work, who more often, like the both of us, exhibit our work in other parts of the country and not locally. Um, although some of them also are very involved locally. Um, so we saw we wanted to um, create a lot of energy. So we chose people who were doing great work, who really um, took in our minds leadership positions in the region in terms of what they were doing, establishing their own galleries, building a practice. Um, and then a, a, a few others that maybe were less known outside, but people that I've known um, throughout the decades that I've been from the area. So, and we, and we really wanted to have a, a, a range of media. We did, and uh, it's going to <clears throat> expand even more so in the, the next exhibition because there will be sculptural furniture and there will be an inst a big installation which will take place in the front windows and uh, as well as photography and painting. And so along with each of the exhibitions, we really want to um, have opportunities to engage the community in other ways. So we've created a series of events, one of them called Hands On. The first one will be Christine Style doing a community uh, rubbing of one of her very large woodblock prints. Um, that will happen the weekend of January 28th and 29th. Um, so, you know, we have acquired a mass of wooden spoons um, and are looking forward to people coming in. Um, we have, um, we'll be doing, uh, each exhibition will have an artist conversation. So the first one is February 10th, a Thursday evening, and it will be Tom Fries and David Graham in conversation with myself moderating. Um, so that will be an, an evening event in the gallery, but will also become a podcast um, for our website. And um, and we also, um, we both are really interested and in, have been involved with different aspects of bookmaking, David uh, in the commercial realm and myself in the limited edition handmade realm. Um, so we're um, creating something we're calling the book club, which will uh, feature a, a book reading and Christy Dietz, a painter from uh, De Pere, uh, she and her husband, Ed Risden um, have uh, published a couple of books based on Christie's paintings and Ed's really whimsical writing about them. So on February 19th, um, there will be uh, a reading in the gallery in the afternoon. So um, we're really excited by those things. You know, we, we love the openings and that's really great, but we're looking to create lots of different conduits for, for people who either really know and love art already, or maybe find themselves sort of um, uh, uh, attracted in by another tentacle of, of activity. We are hoping that um, the artists will act as a magnet, both through their work and through their words as, you know, with the folks that they know. Uh, I mean, I know just, you know, everybody named Warpinski in town and uh, other folks like Alexis and such, but, um, we're, we're looking for people to pull it in and um, it's should be great. We had a great turnout last week and um, I did want to point out that uh, cutting the ribbon was not the only thing that uh, De Pere has done for us. We also got a, a grant earlier in the process, which allowed us to change all the lighting and uh, improve. Yeah, the, from the Main Street Bounce Back program, which was, was really um, amazing and we're very grateful for it. 
Um, I also, I, I heard you ask this question of others, so I'll, I'll jump ahead. Um, we, um, on our website, there is a, an area called participate. Um, so we are actively hoping that people will make proposals for th events that could happen within the space, um, whether that is an art exhibition that one wants to curate or have of one's own work, pop of events of, of any sort. Um, musical events, readings, and those sorts of things. Um, we're open to artists doing longer term projects using it as experimental space. Um, so that's under the call for proposals. Um, we're also both really interested in working with internships. We both have been in academia for decades and decades and decades and decades. Wait a minute. <laughs> Just decades. Well, if we add both of our decades together, it's like 70 years between us. So okay. <laughs> that was a long time. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot to both our own personal practices, plus what there is in terms of arts management, which I know you all know. So um, we're, we're hoping that there are some people who will really want to work with us in that way because we've had internships in our lives in other uh, places in the country. Um, and then, of course, we would, we could, as anyone can, would benefit from those people who are just wonderful, have big hearts and a lot of time and want to volunteer. So um, there are little mechanisms uh, on the web for hitting buttons to say you want to talk to us about any of those things. So go to newartspace124.com. It's, it's also a space that can be used for other non-art oriented events. Yeah, we have a couple of um, bridal showers going on. It's a secret. Um, using the space and we hosted a Christmas Eve uh, dinner uh, in the space. We broke it in, yes. Yeah. Well, that was, it's a family dinner. <laughs> it was great. My family's really massive, so it was... <laughs> All right, so we'll let you ask some questions. Okay. <laughs> oh, <Gary. laughs> we're ready. Play it on. Come on. The problem is, is I'm kind of familiar with the other organizations, and so you guys are like brand new to me. So I'm like totally enthralled. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say, I think you are absolutely filling a gap in Northeast Wisconsin, and I I'm excited to see that. You know, I think um, a couple of artists that have worked at the Artisan Center are part of your show right now. So. Yeah, see, seeing that come together is really cool. And seeing, um, I went to UWGB, so Christy Dietz and Christine Style were my professors. Um, so see, seeing them be part of this, I think that's really cool. So. And I went to UWGB too, and I was the very first assistant curator at the Lawton Gallery back in the 70s. So. Hey, hey, I drove by it just last week. <laughs> That's where I did internships there, and then I interned at the Art Garage when I was at the end of my tunnel. Good for you. Good work. Yeah. Long. Well, you know, one of the things that we did while we were out west for three months is we visited every artist-run and gallery space that we could, whether they were collectives or just artist-driven spaces or couples or groups of 35 people, and it was so fascinating. It was great. I mean, it was, we learned we learned a lot. We learned questions to ask along the way. It helped us think about what our model, our paradigm was. So one thing that I will say is we do not see ourselves functioning at all as a commercial gallery. We are an art space. And so um, we, we want artists to be um, successful and to sell their work, but we are not brokering um, that arrangement. Um, we, are, we will facilitate it in any way. So we um, have loan agreements with our artists to borrow the work from them. Um, so whether they have their own, like, you know, like why would someone with their own gallery where they aren't paying someone else a commission to show to sell their work, why would they want to come someplace else and sell their work for a commission? And we, we recognize that. Plus, we don't want to get caught up in um, a lot of of paperwork, like, I don't know, like paying sales tax to the state of Wisconsin for sales. Yeah. So, I mean, those are some really, you know, down and dirty kind of gritty details, but they, it really, that we had, that we had that time away and could sort of think through some of this stuff was really helpful. Yeah, we, really, this, the uh, sightseeing through all these art spaces across the country, it was just fantastic. And some of them are just like, oh, we've got to do that. We've got to do that. 
Um, there was a, one in particular for me, uh, the ditch project, which was this very non-commercial uh, group of uh, artists. And, uh, and they, really edgy, experimental, contemporary, site-specific, yeah, work. All that stuff. And they would were selling, if they didn't sell stuff, they would just direct potential buyers to the artists themselves. And we thought that was great. And then we also liked their lighting system a lot. So we changed ours just like theirs. So that was great. <laughs> okay. We did a tour oh, yeah. once, what? Like, I don't know, like eight years ago as a team, we all went and toured a whole bunch of arts education facilities too. And it's so beneficial. So anybody who's watching this, I highly recommend it. Artists want to invite you into their spaces and yeah. show off what they've done and what they've learned. So I highly recommend just, just reaching out, just send them an email and say, hey, I want to come see your space. Um, I have a couple of questions for everybody. Oh, go ahead. We had great videos to show you tonight, but. <laughs> anyway, you can still have them. <laughs> well, I, th I think maybe we should bring you guys back for a feature. So um, this, this artist journey series we do every month, just was get to know your local galleries. And then each month we do a theme or we feature a specific artist. So maybe you guys need a whole hour to talk all about your artwork and yourselves and what you're doing. Yeah. Um, okay, I want we'll go to, okay, I'm going to mute us now. <laughs> I want to know too. if anybody, me too. I, and you know what? The timing never is right when you're doing it virtually. So I just try to use a lot of facial expressions and hand gestures. Um, I want to know if anybody who is watching or here wants to ha ask questions. I want to give some space to Whoever is here, even if you guys want to ask questions of each other and your different organizations, I am going to pause and mute myself for a few seconds. Feel free to unmute and ask questions or drop them in the chat and I will moderate that. And then if nobody asks any questions for maybe a minute or so, I prepare a list. You know, I, I can't stay muted for too long. Oh, wow. And the dog wants to join now, too. Um, I took a virtual class on how to do this better. And um, my struggle is not being able to pause and be quiet long enough. So it's a struggle for me to sit here and stare at all of you and not say anything. Um, but I'm going to do it for a few more seconds. I just want to say it's a little hard to do because, you know, there are a number of people who don't, I don't recognize them being new to, new to the town. And uh, Carly Peterson, Andrea, Laura Schley, Haley, we just actually accidentally sort of yeah. met the other day. And Liz, I know so many people named Liz. It's hard to tell which one's, <laughs> who, which one is there, so. I think that's his his um, begging people to turn their cameras on. Yeah, yeah, that was a guilt trip I was laying on you guys. I've been teaching virtually now for ever since the pandemic hit, and man, oh man, that drives me crazy. The, the scourge of no camera. Yeah. I always can tell that I default to like one person while I'm talking for a while because they're making the most like interaction with me. And so I'm always like, okay, who am I who am I engaging with today while I'm talking on my computer in a room by myself? Well, what I really want to know, and these are probably more selfish questions than anything, is I want to know what the future holds for your organizations. Um, what are your future plans? What are your future goals? What are your, your kind of big, crazy ideas? Yeah, let's let somebody else. Who wants to go? <laughs> Alexis, I think you volunteered. <laughs> Did I? Oh boy. Um, let's see here. Well, um, I am excited about, uh, the opening this Thursday. It is, um, you know, now that we are a nonprofit, one of the big goals is to be able to host, um, exhibits that are a little bit more thought provoking and maybe, um, you know, ask some bigger questions, um, about how art impacts with the world and how we interact with it. This particular one 
Um, they reached um, some people reached out to me about hosting a solo show for this particular person. Uh, his name is Dar Ren. He is sentenced to life in prison, and that happened at the age of 17. So um, something, and I'm getting educated along the way with this as well. That um, it's just going, I think, to the state floor tomorrow in the state of Wisconsin to prevent youth from being sentenced to life. Okay, like how crazy he was 17 and um, has no chance for parole, but he uses his art. He uses art to create, to express himself. Um, besides creating, he's also, I feel very gifted at writing and, um, you know, talking about his artwork. So that, you know, this is, this is something new for us that we're doing. So as we move into this year and uh, the years ahead as a nonprofit, um, that's something I'd like to bring more attention to is people that, you know, may not be able to, you know, um, you know, pay for an exhibit or anything like that. Um, so that opens this Thursday night. I'm still finishing that up. Um, of course, the education part um, is gonna grow as we move into this year. Um, you know, I think, you know, once you get to a certain level of experience, it's important to share. You have to give back to the community in one way or another. Um, so that's going to continue to build and grow. And then, um, on the larger scale, as we again, develop as a nonprofit, um, one of my major goals is to reach into public art and make an impact that way. So, um. I'm just going to leave that at that. <laughs> I have, I have some ideas. In the works, um, some possible grant applications that are out for our first one that would hopefully happen this summer if we get it. Fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of big stuff going on. I want to go down that rabbit hole of public art just for a, a brief yeah. second Cause because I see floor is <laughs> on the screen, but also because I'm working on a project with the NWTC Trades Department to um, create and pour concrete platform. Apparently he wants to chat with us right now. She um, said, get that public art. <laughs> I'm trying, Laura. <laughs> yeah, but um, the trade students are going to make and um, lay the concrete platforms and do all of the engineering work and all of the supplies as part of service learning projects throughout our old Main Street Arts District. And they're working on that, or we're presenting next week. So public That's art great. is something we're kind of jumping into too, but it's really cool because then the students get to do it as a capstone kind of service learning project. Yeah. And it's great for all of us to be able to utilize. So definitely, well, definitely. Laura, I noticed you turned your camera on. Do you want to say something? Yes. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'll gladly help you out with your public art needs. And yes, ma'am, I will keep you. Yeah, I wanna... <laughs> Don't... The, the whole city is my gallery, but no. <laughs> I'll gladly help out however I can. Thank Laura, you. For those of us who may not know you or those who are watching this in the future, can you just introduce yourself? Absolutely. Um, my name is Laura Schley. I'm the City of Green Bay's Public Arts Coordinator. I work within the Community and Economic Development Department, and I help manage and coordinate uh, the Green Bay Public Arts Commission's programming and and all of the fun stuff that they have going on. Thank you. So I focus mainly on the city of Green Bay proper, but I'm I'm always willing to help lend a little bit of advice and and consultation for the surrounding area. All that knowledge you've gathered over the years. It's almost five years that I've had this job now, which is bananas. It's crazy. Um, if you guys are watching this and you want to know more about Laura and what she does with the city, she was part of our artist journey. I think it was September, if I'm quoting that right. Our YouTube channel has all of these recordings. So feel free to go check that out. We did one all about kind of the local organizations in the area. So, Laura, thanks for being here and popping in. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Michael, what's next for the premiere? What does your future look like? What are your big crazy goals? Well, uh, I'm actually really excited about our future. Um, you know, essentially when we started the premiere, it was a concept. We didn't even know if it was gonna fly. We didn't know if uh, Green Bay had enough artists. We had a gut feeling that this idea was gonna really change the game for the way that people view the community of art in Green Bay, and the gateway for artists to feel like they have a home. But with that being said, when we started out, we didn't have any electricity. We didn't have any heat. We didn't have any walls. It was just, uh, cold storage warehouse with 
pure concrete and some uh, floor to ceiling uh, windows, which are really lovely. But slowly but surely, we've incrementally added onto this space to eventually have it so that you're not freezing to death while you're trying to work on your art, uh, which is almost constantly in Wisconsin. And uh, that's pretty much just the beginning. I mean, we haven't even really started or gotten to the um, starting line here. So what we just discussed last week with the architects and the developers is this new way of essentially having an open concept um, that is going to allow our artists the freedom of developing their own space the way that they want to see it, uh, but then also having electricity, heat, lights, uh, flooring for the dancers, sound dampeners for the musicians, uh, nice light for photographers, which we've been desperately missing. Uh, and now our window of photography is only from noon to three o'clock. Uh, so, you know, it's really one of those things where um, we really haven't even started yet. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully uh, we keep the momentum and we keep going at this pace and we will be having something brand new for the community of artists to see in downtown Green Bay. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm really excited for it. Uh, and, you know, just getting us to the starting line. So that's, you know, that's that. I'm excited for your space too. We um, constantly get phone calls from artists wanting to come rent studio space. I think it might be, aside from our programming, that's the number one call we get. And we're always saying like, call the art garage, call the premiere. Those are the two places that have studio spaces for artists because we just don't, our building is far too small. We are at maximum capacity. So. Um, I'm really glad to see that need being filled by you guys too. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, we just, we had uh, somebody come through yesterday who's uh, into pottery. And I said, you know, we can't have a kill in here. Artisan Center is your go-to space, you know? So love sending them people your way as well. That's why we all got to know each other and know what everybody's doing, right? So we can help facilitate all of this across the community. Uh, Miss Haley, how about you? What's next for the Art Garage? You guys are uh, the longest running organization on the screen right now. Yes, so um, last year we hired an executive director. She was the first executive director of our organization ever. Um, so we've been spending a lot of time evaluating the programs that we have had in place, seeing what's working really well, seeing what we can expand on. Um, what we can do better, what we want to add. Um, so that's been really exciting to kind of take a step back and look at what we have been doing um, and what we can do going forward. So we have um, plans to for our gallery to kind of expand if we can, um, see what we can do better. I'm excited to work with new artists, um, we were, we were talking about workshops earlier and teaching, so we're always looking for new instructors to add. Um, so really, I'm looking forward to, and the organization, as an organization, we're looking forward to just continue to expand what we do really well with our gallery and our workshops and um, our pop events, like our vendor fairs, and expand our studio space, um, and just continue to bring in new artists, whether they're experienced or just starting out. Um, so that's kind of the goal moving forward is just to keep, uh, look at what we've been doing really well and keep doing that and hopefully reach more artists in the community. Um, I have to say that selfishly, I am very excited to see what happens with your beautiful building. Uh, <laughs> Michael mentioned his beautiful windows. You guys have beautiful windows. We have all of two windows in our entire brick <laughs> building. So I can't wait to see what happens with that beautiful building across the street from us. We're very excited that the art garage yes. is there. You guys have been there for now like 15 years, right? And then we just right. celebrated our 10 year anniversary. So I consider those big wins for the arts in Green Bay. I think that's huge. Yeah, it's really exciting to see um, all these other organizations popping up as well. And like you said, if, you know, as long as we communicate with each other, we can, you know, someone's looking for, I mean, we get people all the time too, like, do you offer pottery classes? Do you offer this? And it's like, well, actually, there's other, there's right across the street, you can go to NWTC or people stopping at the art garage, like, well, where else can I see art? And it's like, well, you can go to De Pere and there's Artless Bastard is there. And so it's really exciting that all of these other 
organizations are emerging too, that we can continue to grow together. It totally is exciting. Um, David and Terry, do you guys have big grand plans? I think we heard a little bit about what your future holds, but I'd love to know more if you want to share. Could we talk about high hopes rather than grand plans? <laughs> yes. I, our, our grand plans right now extend out, you know, to April. <laughs> um, but our high hopes, um, we've had conversations and Alexis has been engaged with us in some of those. Our high hopes are that we are just one more um, stepping stone to helping the whole Green Bay area build a critical mass where there's a, a real vibrancy and connection um, and kind of life of its own uh, in the arts writ large, not just visual arts. So I have dreams of, of lots of pedestrians on our sidewalks on any given day, rather yeah. than fighting the Highway 57 traffic that is now Broadway into Pier. I have visions of, of monthly art walks where everybody in the arts wouldn't think of doing anything else, but having their doors open all at once and everybody who cared about art would be out. We've seen this in so many different communities. I mean, Milwaukee even has like, they have like the night and day thing, you know? So that's the, the big hope that I have. Lincoln, Nebraska, you can't do it all in the one night a week that they have art walks. There it's so, it, there's so many people that are into it and so many galleries that are into it. It's amazing. So that's what we want to go for. Yeah. We're going to kick some butt. It's going to be great. I love it. Honestly, that's, I mean, selfishly my goal too, right? I think we all want to see that. I live in Algoma. That's where I am right now. And um, I think when the James May Gallery was here, the first Fridays each month were amazing and so exciting. It was great to see all the little businesses open. I feel like they're a little quiet now. It's a little bit sad, but I would love to see all of Northeast Wisconsin have more of a passion behind the arts and more excitement. So um, I have one question that Laura sent me. I maybe shouldn't have outed you, Laura, that you sent the question, um, but I'd like to end with this question. You're welcome to answer it. You're welcome to say, it. I don't want to answer that. Um, Laura said, what are some of the biggest challenges you face and how can the community or artists help your organization thrive? I want to also throw in like, can NWTC help? Can the Artisan Center help your organizations? Let me know. What do you guys need? What do, I, what do all the galleries I, need to be successful? I think kind of piggybacking off of just what David and Terry were talking about, I think um, one of the things that's lacking here is just, like they said, that vibrancy of the arts and the community coming together for those experiences. Um, that's why I'm super excited, you know, to have obviously them opening up in Japir because we need more art. We need more art everywhere. Um, the more of us, the better because it's going to draw people. I don't I don't know if the if the public in general really understands that when a community has public art, when they have like music, theater, poetry, you know, um, fine art, that it creates this energy within it and it draws people here, right? Um and so I think that's one of the, one of the interesting things um for some reason, there's so much talent here, I believe, in the state of Wisconsin. I've seen it. I know a lot of us have, too. But it still feels very disconnected, right? The why, it's like I ponder that sometimes. I'm like, oh, I don't have time to get into that right now because, you know, you have to keep working. But that's, I think, probably the biggest kind of underlying issue is just this disconnect. And, you know, these artists, like... I know a lot of them want to sell their work. They want to show their work. They want to do this, but then they got to get out and they have to come to each one of us and they have to talk and they have to engage in their community more. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, my high hopes are exactly what, you know, Terry and David were speaking of. It's like that this becomes more of the norm, you know, because it is in other places, you know? So it's really kind of interesting. Um, you know, why that hasn't um, really popped off around here. Yeah. But I, I, and I do think that is just a, a question of, of what I describe as critical mass. I mean, I think we know from our experience teaching that when you have too few people in a classroom, you can just not build energy. 
and that it takes a certain something to create the kind of velocity where things can happen. And I, you know, and I think that's where, you know, the premiere, we were so impressed. I had no idea that was there when I relocated back and we, we did our little subversive investigations and, and had some lovely conversations with you and your wife yes, right. um, and, and saw this and it's like, this is like really great fertile ground. This is where things grow. This is where things generate. It's the same thing with the art garage and with the artisan center and with Alexis creating studio space in her storefront. I mean, the way to get more art is to get more people who love art, who feel empowered by their passion for art, whether they're creators or or viewers. And I think that's part of what I think we all need to do is to build audience. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we're wanting to create these ancillary activities related to the shows is to let people see that that they can be engaged, that it's not something that's all hoi polloi, you know, uh, oh, I love Packers and I like ice fishing, art's not for me. Well, that's not the truth. I mean, art is as much a fabric of life as anything. I mean, so that's what I think we have to help people remember because every kid knew it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every little kid knew it. Yep, they all enjoy it. Hey, and I love the Packers, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's not a choice. I, you know, some of my my older art friends in the area that I've known forever, you know, will say to me, oh, Terry, the Packers just suck the life out of Green Bay. And I said, you mm. know, no, they don't. You know, maybe they suck the life out of you. <laughs> but <laughs> but there's... Ooh. there's oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I better... It's okay. It's I, okay. Um, I better meet myself. <laughs> No, no. no, but I don't, I think I think Green Bay has room for it all. I know it yeah. does. Well, going off of the Packers too, uh, we have uh, the photographer for Devonte Adams used the premiere, and it's wild to me that a place that doesn't even have the amenities uh, is drawing in the largest professional group in Green Bay. We have. You know, a wide receiver who will all be sad to see go if he does, which I hope he doesn't. But um, to me, one of my biggest wishes for people that are watching this or people that are tuning in is to um, understand it doesn't come down to just one space. It doesn't happen with just one area being arts. We have to have ancillary art spaces across the board in, in everywhere you go and i think if the community believes that oh you don't just need the artisan center you don't just need artless battery you don't just need new art space or just need um the art garage or just the premiere then all of a sudden what we'll see is this new dynamic of you know, shops that are just woodworkers, shops that are just glass blowers, or metal fabrication that is for art forms. And I think that is when we will see a new Green Bay, a new De Pere, a new Fox Cities that is just a vibrant art scene. Because like everybody said, the talent's here. The talent's already there. Okay. I now have a grand plan. Oh. My grand plan is that this group of people vow to get together annually, semi-annually, and talk about what we can do together to create the kind of oomph that we need to draw people out together. That's my grand plan. Yeah. I agree completely, and it's exactly where I was going to go with it. And I was going to say, you know what? 6.30 on the third Tuesday of every month, I end up feeling the same way. And I feel excited and energized and like I had a really good time doing all of this and hearing more about you and connecting and kind of brainstorming. And it makes my brain feel like there's so much we can do and there's so much potential and it feels really positive. So thank you guys for sharing. Thank you for being here. Um, we will get this edited and reposted and shared. Feel free to share it on your pages or anybody you think who would benefit learning about your organizations. Um, and with that, does anybody have any other last words before I click end? Can I just add something? <laughs> Absolutely, please do. Kind of going off of, you know, creating a community that, you know, that the arts are 
a part of everybody's everyday life. I think a challenge is that right now it almost doesn't feel like that. So sometimes it's a little intimidating to go to a gallery or meet other artists because you feel like you are alone. But I hope, you know, anybody on the call right now or watching in the future can see that everybody that is a part of these arts organization is also a fellow artist, a fellow art lover that is just trying to bring something to the community that brings the community together. Um, and to not be afraid to go out and visit the galleries or volunteer or take a workshop, you know, we're all, I think we're all just kind of in the same boat trying to do the same thing. So and definitely, <laughs> Kelly, just to, you know, it, it just, it's just getting up and asking, right. Whether, right. you know, ask, just ask, you know, I just recently had somebody come in this weekend and, you know, it's an artist who's just been creating and creating, creating, and just hasn't even like, doesn't even know where to start to showcase his artwork. And I'm like, well, you can't just leave it in these boxes, you know, cause that's where it's at mm -hmm. right now. And, you know, again, so it's just as an artist, it's like, you need to get out, you need to network, go to openings, go to events at the premiere, you know, um, you know, apply for public art for Green Bay, like get on their newsletters, whatever it is, you have to really engage and what better opportunity than all of us that are here in your backyard, right? And for a lot of, then a lot of times we can be that stepping stone to, you know, launch you to wherever you're meant to go next. But it's like definitely take advantage of, um, there's a lot of great opportunities here. So, you know, just gotta ask. Mm -hmm. We're all here for the artists. That's so what we're here without for. the artists, we don't <laughs> exist. <laughs> exactly, that's what we're here for. You got it. We all just wanna help, right? So. On that note, I'm gonna go feed my dog because he is barking at and growling at me. So um, thank you guys all for being here. I appreciate it. Terry and David, it was nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. Um, everybody else have a great night and I hope to see you in person soon. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Thank you. Bye. Bye. See ya.